This is episode 18 of the Lakers Takes Podcast, and today I'm talking about the Lakers going winless last week, the trade deadline ending, and the Lakers doing absolutely nothing, and previewing the one game we have coming up before All-Star break. Let's get into it. To start this week of losses, the Lakers played the Milwaukee Bucks and they lost 131-116 and it was a game where the Lakers were just flat out outclassed. The Milwaukee Bucks are a good team. We know that. They won the championship last year, but they really demonstrated how superior they are to the Lakers and, and at what level they play at when they really play to their best currently and how their season's gone compared to the Lakers season. The Lakers just never really had a chance in this game. They lost every single quarter except the fourth quarter when essentially it was garbage time for the majority of it and there weren't too many highlights on the Lakers end. LeBron was solid 27 8 and 5. He had a good game for himself. Anthony Davis 22 and 9 but he really just Giannis just really took it personal and took it to him and it it really wasn't a positive game for him. And you had Russ again having a bad game and again being benched. Yeah he sat out at the end of the third which which wasn't too you know um, odd but then he never came in at all in the fourth and obviously that that was odd and that was something that was a sticking point um and a narrative after the game you know it was it was just a, a, a such a dark moment for the Lakers with Russ being frustrated Russ being benched LeBron being asked if the Lakers are anywhere near the Bucks level and him saying no and he could have told you prior to the game they weren't at that level and while that is true and harsh it was still shocking to hear him even confess that if you will you know on camera on the record uh, it, it's it's the true reality of the team that they're just not ready and I was worried about this February and how bad it could be and with this loss here it kind of demonstrates exactly what my fear were and what my fears were that they just weren't ready for this level of quality of opponents every single night and that this month could get very ugly and uh, last week it, it definitely started ugly with this loss against the Bucks. and as I always say it can always get worse the rumors were at a, a pitch fever high. The disdain towards Russ and his performance was also at an all-time high. And the game before the trade deadline, which was also on a back-to-back after playing against Milwaukee, they had to go to Portland very next night. And guess what? Russ misses his first game ever. All season, he's been an Ironman. He's shown up. He's been ready to play. And all of a sudden... You know, he's got some back tightness. He can't play in the game right before the trade deadline, which obviously people were reading the tea leaves there saying, oh, well, clearly, you know, he's resting, just doesn't want to risk an injury when he's about to get traded, this and that, you know, a lot of speculation. Uh, And it was just a lot of tension on a back-to-back against the Trailblazers team that's really, you know, essentially just a couple of maybe pieces and, and some G Leaguers that got called up because they've also made a lot of trades and moves. So it felt like it was a game the Lakers should still easily win, even with all this turmoil. But again, context is everything. And with all this turmoil, the Lakers were not able to win. They lost 107 105. And again, this was just another bad loss for different reasons. In Milwaukee, it was getting all classed. Here, it was just not playing anywhere near your level and and definitely playing down to your opponent. You just got sloppy defense. You got bad play all around. I think Anthony Davis didn't even try a field goal attempt in the fourth quarter. He didn't really try too many shots to begin. He definitely wasn't aggressive against a team he totally should have been aggressive with. And, you know, overall, you know, I'm definitely a big uh, AD supporter. I think he's fantastic. Top 20, top 10 in the league. Uh, no matter how you slice it, but this was definitely a disappointing game where you expect him to kind of take control and be commanding. He, he has been since returning from his injury, but this week was just not a good week for AD, and, and this game was right in the middle of that poor performance last week. 17 points, 7 rebounds, only 11 shot attempts. That's just not going to cut it. Uh, Lakers Nation couldn't blame uh, Russ in this game. He didn't play. Guess what? The problems for the Lakers are more than just Russell Westbrook and his shot selection and his aggressiveness and his turnovers. Uh, when you have a team that's failing as miserably as the Lakers are, it's going to be more than one person. And, you know, not that we needed the evidence, but maybe some people did. This was clear that, hey, take Russ out and things don't just get solved. Uh, th- th- there are bigger issues uh, than just that. And we headed right into the trade deadline. Of course, I mentioned earlier, deadline day came and it went and the Lakers did nothing. Now, there's rumors of they could have gotten a John Wall and Christian Wood trade for Russ, maybe THT, maybe a pick. A lot of speculation. I don't like to talk too much in speculation because, you know, I do believe when there's smoke, there's fire, and there's enough smoke here to make me think there was a fire. But the details of that fire, I don't feel comfortable really, like, exploring or sharing. So... I'm going to leave it at that, but there were some trades, some rumors on what they could do with Russ, rumors on THT, rumors on none, rumors, rumors, rumors. But guess what? Nothing happened. 
The Lakers are the same team they were before the trade deadline. They're the same team after. This is a team. Will there be some buyout candidates now that the trade deadline's over? Will there be some options of players they maybe pick up, maybe let go of? Sure, I don't think the roster is done being changed at all. But the idea of some kind of big shift or big change to maybe spice it up or maybe improve things, that's out the window. Um, you're just going to get marginal incremental improvements potentially from the buyout market. You're not getting anyone who's going to revolutionize or transform uh, this season into anything other than what it is, which is a disappointing year, a struggling year, and a year where the Lakers will be lucky if they can get a first round exit. That's the reality right now as we see it. I don't like being the bearer of that news, but I don't think I'm uh, you know, giving some kind of hot take or anything. It's just the reality of the situation. I still believe with Russ with Braun and with AD on the same page, inspired, active, and engaged, this team could be very good. And at this point, they, they still have a puncher's chance, in my opinion, to shake things up because the talent is that good. And when they're that focused, they can get to a level very few teams can reach. It's just the evidence is there. They're not going to do that consistently or constantly. So after this trade deadline and everything that happened, What's the next game the Lakers played? Well, they played the Golden State Warriors, one of the best teams in basketball, definitely one of the best teams in this decade. And the Lakers went toe-to-toe with them. They did lose 117-115. And again, uh, just like Vin Diesel says in Fast and Furious, uh, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, a win is a win. And this was a loss. It's still a loss. But I don't like to talk about good losses, but they definitely played much better in this game than the other games. And they definitely showed what they could look like when they are at their best. This was Russ being back, trade deadline's over, no more drama, hopefully. And and let's just play ball and let's test ourselves against a team that many consider to be a title favorite. And I think overall, the Lakers played very, very well. You got a solid LeBron game, solid AD game. You didn't get an incredible game, and I'll get into the details of their performance, which was honestly a bit disappointing. Russ played within himself. He had 19 points, only had one turnover. He did a good job with his shot selection, good job with his passing. You know, pretty happy. I wouldn't say it was a great Russ game, but it was a good Russ game. You had... Austin Reeves playing incredibly well, playing some really great defense, had a beautiful block on Clay, I believe either late in the third, early in the fourth, uh, which which actually kind of woke up Clay. But unfortunately, yeah, you, you got to come at him, you know? So so Bradley was doing, Reeves was doing a great job there. Even Bradley, I, I'm still not a fan of all the minutes he gets and all the time he plays, but you could tell he was also at least giving really good effort and trying to kind of show up the team that let him go, which was the Warriors uh, during uh, training camp slash preseason. So Bradley, I think, had a, a, a better game. And THT, he was heating up too. He had 17 points. You know, he was a plus eight from the field in a game that the Lakers lost. I thought THT made some, some good decisions and was aggressive and, and hit a couple shots that really helped keep the Lakers in the game, especially early on. You know, it wasn't a great Monk game. That was definitely disappointing. Monk, you know, he, he is a microwave, and sometimes, you know, the microwave doesn't come on. And, and this was a game where he just really didn't. He still had 12 points, but I was hoping that there would be a moment where he starts hitting threes and starts cooking. We never really got that from Malik in this game. But again, M- Malik's a role player. He gets hot, he gets cold. Uh, he was he was a little more lukewarm here. It was lukewarm Monk, not, not microwave Monk. But, you know, uh, I, in general okay with his performance it was really you know late in the game it came down to just clay getting hot he stayed aggressive Kaminga was just a monster which you know when i watched the tape on the team the warriors uh, that's what i did think could happen because the one thing the lakers just don't do well and i don't know why they just don't box out they don't put a body on somebody before they go for the boards there were so many boards that ended up being 50 50 balls because the lakers just went for the rebound without boxing anyone out if they just box out, they cut off a lot of Kaminga's rebounds, a lot of his putback points, things of that nature. Uh, but, you know, they, they failed to do so, and it did cost them, and it, and it meant a good uh, Jonathan Kaminga game from the Warriors. And in a game where you only lost by two points, all those kinds of things factor into, you know, why you lost and why you didn't win. Uh, again, it was ultimately, though, Clay. Clay was incredible. Best game since coming back from his injury, 33 points. He was 5 for 9 from 3, 12, 22 from the field, played 30 minutes. He was a monster. He was fantastic. And and ultimately, it was just a little bit too much clay. And then Steph did okay down the stretch, but it was really clay who who ultimately led the team and, and got them to the point where they were able to be victorious. Now, the Lakers still had chances. With under a minute to go, uh, Warriors were up one. Uh, Steph Curry got the switch he wanted. He was targeting Reeves. He got the one-on-one against Reeves, and he, he made his little runner, made it a three-point game. 
And then LeBron gets fouled. They call the foul a shooting foul, which it didn't look like it was. But that's why I'm not a fan of uh, fouling when you're up three anyway. But that was the Warriors' strategy. They fouled LeBron. It got called as a as a shooting foul, and he went to the line and he couldn't convert on his free throws. He made he missed the first one, made the second one, but had to miss the third one on purpose to try to get a putback to take it to OT. It was unsuccessful, and the Lakers lost. So it really felt like a game the Lakers, you know, wanted to win and, and were so close to winning, but ultimately weren't able to get the job done. But, you know, you kind of held your head high thinking, man, that was a good team. That was a, that was a team that we didn't see all week and we have, we've rarely seen all year. And you just think, okay, if you could play at that level, maybe there's a lot of games coming up you can win. You know, maybe we you cannot maybe not turn this around to the point where we want, but maybe we can have a positive end to the season versus how negative it's been so far throughout the season. So we'll see. Uh, you know, at this point they gotta show it more than than um, than maybe they'd like to. We, uh, you know, we're not gonna believe anything until we see consistent performance that's really really high. And we're just about done with the third quarter of the season. So it, it it's kind of getting rough to even kind of believe that just because of how many games are left. But you know, we'll talk about the third quarter of the season being wrapped up. You know, after All Star break, but we're not quite there. So that ends the uh, recap on the week the Lakers had. It was a really rough week. It was a really bad week. Zero and three week. Hopefully this week's much better. Only have one game before All Star break, so not too much to really go on. But but let's preview that game. Like I said, Lakers only have one game. That's on Wednesday. Which if you're listening to this, it's the exact day it's gonna happen. So it's at 7 p.m. Uh, West Coast time on ESPN, nationally televised game. Lakers have a lot of nationally televised games. Let's see if the Lakers can end. Uh, before All-Star break with the win. That would be really good just to give the fan base a little something to be happy about. And then I think they need a break for sure. This break is needed. Hopefully people can get rest. No one's really playing in any of the events except LeBron for the All-Star game. So everyone can get some R&R and hopefully come back knowing, hey, you got a job. You're on the team all season. We have a run left. We have the fourth quarter of the season left. Let's go out there and and make something happen with with the the quarter of the seasons left. Cause there's still like about you know 24, 26 games left. Still time to make some improvements. Uh, maybe not enough time to get out of the play-in. Looks like that gap's just way too big. But maybe you can get a high spot in the play-in and, and have an opportunity to at least con- control your own destiny, just having to win one game and then advancing to the first round. So. We'll see how those things happen. We'll talk more about that later. Let's hope the Lakers can get this win. Finally, they're on a three-game losing streak right now. Let's not make it four. Let's get a W against the Jazz, and then we'll reset and look into what's going to happen with the team after All-Star break. So I, myself, am also going to take a break. I'm not going to do a podcast next week because there's only one game, and I want to just recap the the, the Lakers-Jazz game and then uh, kind of preview the the third quarter so we're going to take another week off here at uh, the lakers takes podcast and kind of rest up ourselves or myself actually because it's, it's just me on here rest up myself on the podcasting and we'll, we'll get back to it once the team is back first game they'll play after all-star break is against the clippers so not sure if i'll do a pod right before then or right after that game but it'll be around that window when they play the clippers which is on February 25th. So have a pot either right before or, or immediately after. All right, so that'll do it for the Lakers Takes Podcast. I'll talk to you in the next one. Go Lakers.